the reveal it's a we so it's been about three years since i started the paramotor journey i've learned a lot i've experienced success and failure made a lot of friends along the way and hey i never thought the channel would grow to 10,000 subscribers so a big shout out to you guys for making it happen if you see me at a fly-in please stop me because i want to meet you what do we call the guy that goes up before everybody <clears throat> the dummy. <laughs> what the f*** did he say? What you got there, Matt? It's a wind indicator. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. So what is that? Just baby powder? Uh, you can get it at Walmart in the hunting section. Come get me some of that. Here's a handy way to determine the wind speed. Grab you an anemometer. You can get them for less than 30 bucks and it's a great way to calibrate your own wind indicator. Hey Will, what are you gonna do on Tuesday at eight? Check us out every Tuesday for the show that we will play. Starts at eight on the east side. Don't be late, make it ringside. Place to gather and to chat. Paramotor flying, stuff like that. Red, green, blue, feel the vibration? Laughing with me oh. at me. <laughs> See that? Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Always works. Yeah. Who thought you were gonna kick my ass? You give me a squirt. Uh, Mac Para wing and there just so happens to be a Mac Para representative here at the flying he's offered to take it up and check it out for me any chance you get to have others look over your gear take it they might find something you've overlooked here he comes what you think Brian Good. hey Good. thank you absolutely here at the airport checking things out I'll show you how i sweat when i come out here <laughs> yeah, dang man it's freaking hot it's like 92 degrees a nice day can quickly morph into a whole bunch of nastiness i give you a quick rundown of how i do my planning if i'm deciding to fly i kind of go from the macro down to the micro to get a full picture of what the weather is going to be i'll start off by asking alexa what the weather's like and that starts the ball rolling if that checks out, then I'll start checking the radar and looking for systems that might be moving through that could possibly affect the weather that day. After that, I'll start checking out the winds. As a paramotor pilot, you'll find one of the most difficult things to nail down is the wind. When I first started, I got into some trouble because I didn't check the winds aloft. Winds at the surface were great, but I got 100 feet off the ground and it was a regular party up there. And it, they weren't so great anymore. <laughs> The Windy app gives me a general idea of whether I'm going to be in the ballpark and then I'll start honing into the nitty gritty and for that I use Ryan Carlton. It's an app slash website. You can go to ryancarlton.com and it's designed for balloons but good enough for balloons, good enough for me. I like to keep the surface winds at 10 miles per hour or less with the wind gust no more than half that amount. So if the winds were 8 miles per hour at the surface I wouldn't fly if the wind gusts were over 12 miles per hour. For the winds aloft, not only am I looking at the wind speed, I'm also looking at the wind direction. To make sure that there aren't any drastic changes at the different levels. Hey, when you're only doing 25 miles per hour in the first place, it doesn't take a whole lot of wind to make a big difference in your ground speed. He's not going to run into me. 
apparently I've been riding this thing goofy footed, whatever that means. I guess that's the wrong way to ride it, but works for me. Good morning, man. Good morning. I heard you threw a reserve yesterday. Yep. Is that the first time you've ever had to do that? Yes. Yeah. Really? How, tell me how it felt. Um, well, it was pretty smooth, actually. Like, it went pretty well. Yeah? But, yeah. Was it scary? Uh, honestly, I'd say no. It was intense, but I don't think it was scary. So what were you doing when you threw the reserve? What caused that? Um, so I went into a sat and from what I've heard, I went, went about two rotations, um, and then the outer main A-line snapped. Okay. Kind of sent me into, a, obviously it deformed the wing and sent me into a weird state. I went into a helico, uh -huh. um, got out of the helico, and I was, I kind of had it recovered a little bit, but it was still flying pretty wonky. Yeah. And then it went into another helico and tag with this. From the time that the line broke, to the time that you threw your reserve, about how much time would you guess? 10 seconds or so. You landed in the trees? Yeah, I landed in the trees. How was that? I kind of went into like a gap, I didn't hit any branches or anything, and then my reserve caught everything. Right. And it was kind of like springy, like it was super soft. Could you steer? No, like I was trying, but it wasn't doing it didn't much. Work. What, is, yeah. it, is it around? Uh, yeah, it was a pulled down Apex. It was right a $150 on. reserve. What? I bought it second hand from a guy who wasn't even like willing to open it up and see if it like was cut or anything like that. But I got it repacked and inspected and everything was fine. So There's living proof that reserves work. I'm glad you're okay, dude. Thanks. Mission to see if we can recover the reserve. Oh man, I see it! It looks like you're humping a tree. <laughs> Throw it at your feet? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, swing and a miss. Ow. Woo, that's heavy. Nice job, man. <laughs> uh, all right, man, so we got it all signed. There you go, Keegan. So what are you gonna do with this, Tim? Yeah, Keegan, you can have it back. That's a nice guy right there. Hold up. Dude's got a little cravat going on there. One thing you can do to help lessen the chance of a cravat is to fold over each wingtip before launch and make sure there aren't any lines on the backside of the wing and that they're all on the inside. Mr. James Sutherland behind me. This is going to be his first flight after five weeks from a broken femur. So I know he's excited to get back in the skies and uh, yeah, I'm excited for him. Glad you're back, James. Alright, so I'm going to cross this body of water here. You see this little part that juts out? I'm going to cross over that because the lake is narrowest right there. Also, I'm heading directly into the wind right now, so I'm at an altitude that at any point I can turn around, head downwind, and right underneath me is my out. So I feel comfortable crossing here. Check out this sunset. So many times I land before the miracle happens. I mean, I'll land, turn around, and I'll be like, oh my God, that's the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. Wish I was up there. So, might be worth staying in the air for another five minutes. <laughs> 